Yo, yo, what up guys? Back for another one here. Um, Sean over at It's Not Stop let me know that my um, coolant reroute hose for my Mark 7 is indeed the same part number as the one for the 8Y. I wasn't sure because now they have two different versions of hoses. So uh, I'm going to throw this in today and talk to you guys a little bit, obviously, about the title here. I get asked a lot, a lot, a lot, do I miss the Mark 7? Do I miss having a manual? Um, of course, of course I miss my Mark 7. That thing was like about as built as you can get besides like, I don't know, not much. <laughs> there was like everything under the sun done in that thing. The alignment was completely dialed in. It was loud, proud, sounded great, drove great until it didn't. <laughs> but I mean, I do miss it. But when I'm in this car, like I don't, I don't really, I like when I think about that car, I'm like, like racing, doing autocross and stuff, and I'm like, dang, yeah, I freaking really miss that car. But I know this Audi right here has a lot more potential, mostly because of the DSG. Now I do miss banging gears, of course, like who who wouldn't like, but this transmission is just, is really phenomenal. Like I'm not getting paid to say this, legit. Now day to day, I mean, of course it is a little boring, but I mean, I set cruise control on this thing, it steers itself, it brakes for itself. I just like chill. I'm just relaxing like a king. And the, the Mark 7, I didn't have any of that. You know, I'm shifting for myself. I mean, obviously I had cruise control, but you know, it was, I had to pay a lot more attention and, and it was a lot more NVA. You know, that thing was loud and vibrating and this and that, which was great because it was, you know, a race car. But I mean, do I miss it? Yeah. I'm probably always going to miss it. Just like I miss my Mark 4 R32. Um, I'd probably buy another Mark 4 before I bought another Mark 7, honestly, just because R32 is just dope. But um, I, this, I mean, most of the parts fit on this anyway, and this car is going to definitely make more power than that car did. And our, this car already has almost as good a, as the best time that my Mark 7 had. This almost already beats it. Now, mind you, I never got a dragon time or a quarter mile time after I built the motor and did big turbo and all that. Um, oh, yeah, not. I got times on pump gas with the built motor, but I don't think I did. With the 85. Maybe I did. Either way, it wasn't great. It was like 11.99 at 120 something on the street. It's 60 foot. It really good. It was like a 172 60 foot, I think. But this thing's already doing like 192 stock. I haven't gotten a good quarter mile out of it because I don't have enough road around here. But I know it's going to be. Wait, I mean, just stage one on this is going to be quicker and like all the new technology. It's just great. Like I, I really, really like. I think I don't know that when it comes to appearances, I think the Mark Seven is always going to have just one notch over this. That's just until maybe until I get everything done to it that I want done. Then we'll see how I feel. Not that this car looks bad or anything. I love the way this car looks. The body lines are are better than the Mark Seven, I think. But just like the overall look that I had, it, you know, in, in its prime, I think looks better than this. Obviously, and this is just stock with some wheels and other screens, but. Um, let's get this in and we'll talk more about the transmission. Now y'all DSG guys already know what I'm getting at here, but coming from a manual guy who raced the manual car for like, I don't know, 10 years. Pretty much the same transmission between the Mark IV and the Mark VII. The uh, only difference, the Mark VII had an LSD after a while, which I barely got any time going. Speaking of, it's sitting right over there on a pallet, about ready to go to this new home. Hopefully this week it gets shipped out, just waiting on a shipping address and it's going it's already mostly paid for so um there's that anyway there is no comparison uh, and i really haven't driven this on track yet but like especially at autocross when i would like suffer in my times because i would just bang off the rev, rev limiter in first or second gear rather than shift because it would either a lock me out or b i would have to you know to shift and then almost immediately downshift so with this car i'm not, pretty much not going to lose any time I'm just boop Boop, boop. There's no doing this and that or getting locked out of third gear. Like I do there. I don't understand how many times third gear and fourth gear would lock me out. And sometimes even second, I did so many different like um, shifter alignments and fluid changes and all types of different like bushings and, and upgrades just to try and get the trans not to do certain things. And even with the dog box, it would still lock me out of third gear. I don't even understand. It's a straight cut gear. I go from two to three and it would just like not want me to go. 
it blew my freaking mind. It made me so, it pissed me off so much. And I spent so much money on that Bill Trans, and sometimes it would still, like, kind of lock me out. And my Joe wasn't exactly used to it or anything. And it's a great transmission, but, like, just little things about the manual trans would really piss me off. Now, there was a lot of times it, it was great where, um, of course, like, beating out a DSG car or an auto car with, you know, a manual is just, like, the best thing ever. I'm going to play some clips here. Found something different on the, the engine. I, I should have paid attention to this when I had the intake off. But so this right here, boom. You guys know the spot. If you're familiar with your engine bay, um, it's like a lot thicker on the new one than it is with the racing line replacement. You can see it's if it would freaking focus. See, it's a lot thicker on the new one versus uh, the racing line here and there's no like you have to cut this off it's very interesting but then it goes back to normal size up here well, that's kind of annoying and just beware I guess I'll be selling this or just giving this away now but oh well something else I gotta buy Look at that EQT grounding kit though keeping things looking fresh I guess even if the part numbers are the same from racing line, it still doesn't fit. This is like the RT on, the nipple's bigger, and you gotta like Dremel off that clamp or something. Um, it kinda sucks, because I really didn't wanna buy one of the Moses again. I really, really, really hate the way that this looks on the intake, but what, what can you do? I guess I have to order another one once they're available. But, uh, I'm gonna hop in the car. I wanna go for a little cruise. It's nice and chilly. Hopefully I get some traction. We'll get a little video, maybe we'll get a better eighth mile time now with it being chillier. Because when I was trying to do them in the last video, it was like 70 degrees out and heat soak. So we'll try and do that. Um, yeah. Really, so if it, when it comes down to it, do I miss the Mark 7? Yes. But uh, I think I got the better pick here in the long run of things. Especially with the transmission and the new motor and the new turbo and just new things, new technology. And uh, it's not stripped out. It's not. It's something I can actually enjoy. In New Mexico, you know, the the weather, the heat there is dry heat. So I, it could be 100 degrees out, and I didn't, didn't have AC in that car. It didn't really bother me. I just had the windows down, chilling. Here, it's like 75, 80, and you're drenched in sweat, and you need AC. Otherwise, you're gonna die. So <laughs> it wouldn't have been all that enjoyable in the summer here, driving around. And I got a daughter on the way. We'll be 34 weeks tomorrow or well tomorrow from this video and uh it'd be nice you know just have a little daily or not a little daily but a quick daily that i also have my daughter in you know and maybe she'll remember this car when she grows up who knows how long i'll have it but it'll definitely be something you know if i go to take the mark 7 you know, there's no back seats or anything and it's not really safe because there's no crash bars and you know airbags in the front seat, you know all that so this I'll actually be able to enjoy every day, like I did with the Mark 7 before I went full idiot <laughs> on it. There's a lot of things, but I learned a lot of things. I don't regret it. I don't, I do miss it. it just, I mean, I also miss my Mark 4, so I feel like I just spent a lot of time in those cars. A lot of learning, a lot of wrenching, a lot of racing. So all those, you know, the blood, sweat, and tears, everything that's going to attach you to a car. But all in all, I mean, I get in this thing, it puts a big smile on my face, and it's pretty quick. It needs to get an exhaust on it already, but, I mean, 
I think, like I said, I think it's just going to be better in the long run. I, I missed the manual a little bit, but really, this is the better trans. No, no doubt about that. Especially when or if I put an LSD into this, um, there'll be no comparison. And this car's comfy and looks great. And there's AC and wireless CarPlay and wireless charger and a digital dash and it drives itself basically. And it's the new new, so I don't know. I like it. I still love my Mark 7s, don't get me wrong. I'm not like talking down on it by any means, but people ask me a lot what I think and that's what I think. I mean, all things being equal, I probably would pick this. I mean, I almost sold my Golf 4 4 and S3 once upon a time, way before I went hybrid turbo and, and all that, but I like I like my Audis. Audis are pretty much like the only sedans I actually like, um, believe it or not. I'm not a big sedan guy. I really am a big, a, a big hatch guy, but really only Volkswagens because I think all the other hatchbacks look kind of stupid, so I don't know. I'm a, I'm a weird individual. <laughs> Definitely a Volkswagen Audi fanboy, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, all right, let's go try and get a better eighth mile real quick to end this video. Hopefully it wasn't too boring for you guys. But learn something about the coolant hose and uh, you got to hear me right on about transmissions, <laughs> I guess. And it's just little things like that and like that and like this. Just everything about this thing. Open my garage with a button on my steering wheel. Like, there's just so many little great things about this car that uh, it's just awesome. Oh, I didn't show you guys, I forgot. So um, I learned that you can change the colors. So like here and the color in the door. And so I was messing around with that. Then I just went to something called like the default, well not like the default, one of the options is called Audi Select. And I didn't realize, but when you go to say, now go to comfort mode, now my colors change. The color changes there, color changes down here, changes on here. Um, the color's kind of off on camera and you go to auto I think it'll go to yeah it goes to like a white color and dynamics like red and then the individual I have it on like some random stuff I think I'd have it to white but you can go in there um I don't know where is it it's kind of like deep into the settings vehicle yes like visibility interior lighting See an individual, I go to edit, surfaces, colors, and then I can make this purple, make it freaking, oh, this is the colors down here, my bad, <laughs> uh, blue, darker blue, it's kind of neat, I think I'm going to put it all on just yellow, just for shits and giggles here. Colors, oh, surface, lines, colors, I'm not even showing you guys, my bad. It's the brightest yellow here, boom. I dig it. I can't really dig it, I got the garage light on so it kind of messes with it, but it's, it's pretty dang bright. I really dig it. Anyway, just little things like that, like there's so many, so many things you can fool around with. Put her back in dynamic. And like having real buttons versus a Mark 8. Oh man, so much better. Anyway, we'll go back. Let's go on a ride. So if you guys watch my last video, and if you didn't, click somewhere to watch it. <laughs> I was just kind of like circling around, just trying to get the engine warmed up. I found an even better road right by it, and it's right by the house. And that's awesome. Definitely gonna be able to do full eighth mile hill here and maybe even quarter mile. And it it's a dead end road and there's only two roads to go off of it. So, I mean, it's like dead over here. It's nothing but like industrial stuff. So, pretty excited about that. Just had to stop and, and tell you guys. I think, um, I think the car just might be warmed up enough. So we're gonna pull back around here and uh, get rid of the beans. All right, guys, don't be mad at me. I didn't record it. I really meant to, and I started getting nervous, like I always do, but I got my best draggy time yet. I knew it was gonna happen once I put these Verkline arms in. And it's not like anything crazy significantly better, but it is better, and that's what we were looking for. 
um, did eighth mile and 8.25 at 85 mile an hour, which is great with a 60 foot of 1.96, which is almost a tenth off my 60 foot, which is awesome. Um, 330 foot, 5.38, and I was braking in like as it was say, like as I started braking, she screamed out quarter mile, and I haven't looked yet. So let's see what we did. I uh, see it's. I'm always breaking when it says I never really try and do quarter mile stuff um, so I guess yeah I said I was at 89 mile an hour my best so far was um, two weeks ago so before the arms maybe I said it at 12 8 9 I just did a 12 9 5 at 89 so I don't know is my very best one yeah there's a 12 8 9 at 101 so and I was at a 12 9 5 at 89 so I think I would have been like way way better if I did a full quarter mile if I had more road for it it wasn't so sketchy this road has like a bunch of rocks and it. it sounds like rain when I'm on this road might not do too many here cuz I don't want my paint all messed up man that's awesome that's really awesome I like that let's see what my 0 to 60 was on that 4.47 wow that is the way better than my best my best before oh it was a 4.53 so now it's a 4.47 you guys want to see it i don't even know if it'll focus on that there you go boom that's what's up improvements all around with the verkline arms and you can see right there like I wish I still, maybe I still do. I'm sorry, I know I'm rambling on. These clips are long as hell. I think I deleted all of my ones from my R. This is, yeah, these are all 2021, 11, 11, yeah. Dang. Oh, anyway. I know the best drag I had in my R was like 11.99 at like 120 something. Anyway, so you guys can see already, I mean, just this transmission alone is is going to make numbers way better for me. And you guys already know that. If you're in any of the forms or have half a brain, you know the DSG is better. In terms of straight performance, people say they like more control, this and that. Which is I, it's something I used to say as well. Like, ah, I want to be control the shifting and blah, blah, blah. But, like, this is pretty great. Not going to lie. I mean, once you get a TCU tune, you can make it so it doesn't auto upshift even on rev limiter and they make it so it doesn't it won't double shift either so say if you if the ecu or tcu itself goes to shift and you 30. hit the shift button within a certain like window it won't double upshift quarter mile so uh i mean that's pretty much like the only two gripes i would really have and those are already taken care of once you get it to so as soon as that stuff's out you know your boy's gonna get it this is another thing as soon as uh, i don't want to show you all my address but like as soon as i get near my house this little message pops up and it's like press this button to open your garage door like on my screen like I've, like it just knows because you i plug in where i live so like as soon as i get close to the house it's like here you go open the garage i wish it kind of automatically did it but i guess liability it shouldn't anyway i'm gonna end this and i've been rambling on but uh it is what it is i wish that that line would have fit kind of sucks but let me know what other videos you guys want to see i know it's getting near the holidays i got pretty much six weeks until my baby gets here less than that who knows she could pop literally any day but uh definitely probably not going to get the rest of the work line stuff on before the baby comes but it gives me something to look forward to um some weekend once it gets warmer or something so We'll see. So lots of plans for the car. Raceline just came out with their turbo inlet, turbo hose, and I got some body parts on order. Thanks again to Sean. He's really hooking it up. <laughs> He's really been a, a really, really great guy. He's going to be a huge part of the build of the car. You guys should definitely check out It's Not Stock. So um, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Oh, if you guys want to follow me on the Draggy app, that'd be me. I'll follow you back. I just realized that there's like people can comment on your stuff. There's like people on here from like six months ago. <laughs> so I need to go back and follow these people. I apologize if you're one of these people. I didn't even know this was a thing. <laughs>